Hello everyone. Finally, we are back with the third episode of brush customization series. Today, I'm going to talk about the jitter tool. This is one of my favorite topics from this customization series. But first, let me quickly tell you what is jitter and how it works before we go deep into the customization process. So, Jitter is basically the state of being unstable, something irregular, a deviation from anything normal. For example, let's say this straight line is a normal situation. And then, if I introduce jitter, it becomes something like this. And this jitter has many forms. We can introduce jitter in terms of position, shape, angle, color, and more. Now that we have the basic concept of jitter, let's talk about the different tools under this option. First, we're going to talk about the parameters that are going to affect the brush stroke. First, we have jitter position. Notice that when I increase the jitter position, the normal line scatters into circles, which is its building unit. We are introducing deviation, so the more it increases, the more scattered the line becomes. So this is our normal brush stroke, and this is after we introduced jitter position. Next up, we have Thickness Jitter. If we increase the thickness parameter, the line becomes thicker and thinner at random positions. Doesn't it remind you of Deep Pen Bleed? That brush was also created by increasing this parameter. Now, in case of opacity jitter, the more we increase it, we can see that the random parts of the brush has lower opacity than the normal. This parameter is actually really important when you are blending two colors. Next up is jitter spacing. So similarly, if we increase this parameter, the brush is going to have random different spaces in between two building blocks. Finally, we have the angle jitter, which is the last tool we're going to talk about regarding changing the brush strokes. For this parameter, I'm going to take a different brush to show you the example because this current brush won't show any changes even if I introduced angle jitter. I have taken the brush airbrush particle. The default brush has the maximum angle jitter. That is why we can see the scattered effect. Now if I change it into zero then you can see that the randomness is gone. It's looking more like a straight line. It's time to move on to the next segment that is jitter color or the fun part. At first we will take a look at jitter hue. If we increase it a bit, we can see the colors near yellow in the brush stroke. The more we increase the parameter, the more the color range expands. So if we go maximum, we can see that there are practically every color on the color wheel in just one stroke. Now, if we take a look beside pattern, there are two more options, endpoint and stroke. Let's see what endpoint does. So if we change it into endpoint, the starting of the stroke and the ending of the stroke will have different colors. Lastly, we have stroke option. By choosing it, 
we can have different colors for each stroke. As you can see, the hue is changing with every stroke. The point here is the new stroke will always be different than the previous one. Isn't this jitter color fun and cool? Just like the hue parameter, we can increase the saturation and increase or decrease the brightness as we wish. Increasing the saturation jitter will make certain parts less saturated and certain parts more saturated. In case of brightness jitter, if we increase the parameter, we are going to see a lighter deviation of the color. Similarly, if we decrease the parameter, we are going to see a darker deviation of the color. Now, the last segment is Scatter. If we turn on the Scatter button, the brush stroke scatters like spray paint. By turning on the absolute particle size, you can make the scatter look more condensed. Next up, by increasing or decreasing the particle size and the density, you can control how bigger or how smaller your pattern is going to look like. If you max out the particle deviation, you can see a condensed line in the middle and the deviated particles around it. If we change it into minimum, it looks like a cylinder. Now that looks like a pretty cool effect to me. So just by using this jitter tool, you can create some really cool brushes yourself. This tool is really one of my favorites. Before ending the video, let me give you a bonus information here. When you are playing around with this tool, you can randomly turn on more than one jitter parameters to make it look more fun. There are literally endless possibilities. Like if we tried to apply probability theory here, I'm sure there will be crazy numbers of possibilities, honestly. Like right now, while making this tutorial, I made this colorful splatter brush without even thinking too much. I was just playing around and now I have this cool brush that I can use on my arts in future. I would highly suggest you to try out this tool and create some fun brushes for yourselves. So that's it for today's video. I will be back with the final episode of brush customization series soon. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned how to have fun with a simple brush. Thank you for watching it and I'll see you next week. Till then, take care.